The Jordan River, a source of life and an important religious site for centuries, is drying up alarmingly. But that's not all. As the waters of the once mighty river, now reduced to a mere trickle, receded, a shocking discovery that sent shivers down the spines of many was revealed. What was this discovery? What ancient terrors lurk within its depths? Join us as we explore this strange discovery and uncover the chilling mysteries. The Jordan River is a remarkable one in Southwest Asia that flows through the Great Rift Valley and eventually empties into the Dead Sea. One of the impressive things about the Jordan River is that it has the lowest elevation of any river in the world. The river starts at the Syrian-Lebanese border, where the Hasbani River of Lebanon and the Banyas River of Syria meet. From there, it flows south through northern Israel into the Sea of Galilee before reaching its final destination in the Dead Sea. In fact, the Jordan River is also considered the border between the State of Israel and the West Bank. The Jordan River comprises three principal sources, the Hasbani River, the Banyas River, and the Dan River. These sources come together at the Hula Valley in northern Israel to form the Jordan River. The Hula Valley used to be a lake and a marshland, but in the 1950s, it was drained and transformed into agricultural land. From the Sea of Galilee, the river's plain spreads to a width of approximately 15 miles and is known as the Gaw. It's cut by wadis or rivers into towers, pinnacles, and badlands, creating a maze of ravines alternating with a sharp crest. The Jordan River is unique in that its floodplain, the Zur, is a widely winding course, which accounts for the excessive length of the river flow compared to the area it traverses to reach the Dead Sea. The river is shallow and has a high water period, lasting from January to March, with a low water period occurring at the end of summer and the beginning of autumn. Its current is swift, carrying a heavy load of silt. It's also highly salty due to thermal springs, mainly in the Tiberias region on the western side of the Sea of Galilee, and a high gypsum concentration. The Relevance of the River Jordan Historically and religiously, the Jordan River is a big deal. It's considered one of the world's most sacred rivers, with countless references in Hebrew and Christian Bibles. In the Hebrew Bible, the Jordan River is referred to as the source of fertility to a large plain known as the Garden of God. It's called this because of its lush vegetation, which is mentioned in Genesis 13.10. The Jordan is also mentioned frequently in the Christian Bible, with around 175 references in the Old Testament and 15 in the New Testament. The first mention is in Genesis 13, when Abraham and Lot parted ways, and Lot chose the Jordan Valley, which was well watered and compared to the Garden of the Lord. The Jordan is also significant for the renaming of Jacob to Israel, which happened at the ford of the Jabbok River, a tributary of the Jordan. Later, the Jordan acted as a line of demarcation between tribes settling east and west. Throughout biblical history, the Jordan was the site of several miracles, including the crossing of the Israelites under Joshua and John the Baptist's baptism of Jesus in the New Testament. It's even said to have been crossed dry shot by Elijah and Elisha. Perhaps the most significant reference is the location of the baptism of Jesus Christ. The Jordan Valley is just a lush, vibrant, stunning natural wonderland at the crossroads of three continents. With its unique flora and fauna, the valley is one of the world's most important bird migratory pathways. Every year, over 500 million birds flock to the valley as a rest stop on their long journey from Europe to Africa. Since the mid-1960s, 95% of its fresh water has been diverted for irrigation and development projects half by Israel and half by Syria and Jordan. In the 1930s, when a Jewish immigrant from Russia named Pincus Rottenberg arrived in Palestine, he was fascinated by the Jordan River. He had a grand vision to harness its power and build a hydroelectric power station. He knew the river's confluence with the Yarmouk River would provide the perfect location. With determination and hard work, Rottenberg's dream became a reality. The power station he built was a remarkable feat of engineering that produced a whopping 40% of the electricity for Palestine. Sadly, the power station was destroyed during the Arab-Israeli War in 1948. Still, its legacy lives on as a symbol of human ingenuity and innovation. 
Overall, the Jordan River holds great importance in Jewish and Christian traditions. Still, it's also been a part of many significant historical events. But, sadly, this incredible river with such a distinguished history is now a shadow of its former self. The Drying Up of the Jordan River Once upon a time, the mighty Jordan River flowed 1.3 billion cubic meters of water yearly from the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea. It was a lifeline for these surrounding communities and a natural wonder. However, over time, the river's fate changed for the worse. The river nearly dried up, with just a fraction of its historical flow left with sluggish water that appears brownish-green. But how did this happen? Short answer, want an exploration. Israel, Jordan, and Syria built dams, canals, and pumping stations to redirect water for agricultural use and drinking. The unintended consequence was a more than 90% river flow reduction. Today, only about 100 million cubic meters of water remain, and the river is a mere shadow of its former self. The impact of this change has been severe, affecting the surrounding ecosystem, wildlife, and communities that depend on the river. It's a stark reminder of the delicate balance between human needs and the preservation of natural resources. Many of its tributaries have been dammed or diverted, which has turned it into an unhealthy stream in some parts, especially during the summer. In the 1950s, Israel built a pipeline that pumps water out of the Sea of Galilee, stopping the water flow into the Jordan River. Then, in the 1970s, Jordan constructed a canal to divert water from the Yarmouk River, which is one of the main tributaries of Jordan, to water their farmland. A dam is being built by Jordan and Syria on the Yarmouk River, which will cut off its flow into the Jordan River. Although the 1994 peace treaty between Jordan and Israel called for the rehabilitation of the river, little has been done to address this issue. EcoPeace Middle East, an organization working for peace and environmental protection, has been warning about this issue for a long time. According to Gideon Bromberg, EcoPeace's Israeli director, historically, Israel has taken about half of the water from the Jordan River. In contrast, Syria and Jordan have taken the other half. However, Palestinians can no longer access or use water from the river as per a 2013 UN-German agreement. Syria doesn't have access but has built dams in the Yarmouk River sub-basin, part of the Jordan River Basin. For Palestinians, the Jordan River used to mean livelihoods and economic stability. But now, it's reduced to an ambition of statehood and sovereignty over water resources, says Nada Majdalani, EcoPeace's Palestinian director. The river's decline is incredibly disappointing to elderly Palestinians, who remember how they used to go fishing and take dips. The Jordan River and its banks might have been a place of miracles, but its current depleted state doesn't reflect that. So, what has the effect of this drying up been? Well, when a country runs out of water, it's a horror story that's currently unfolding in Jordan. The latest report indicates that the country needs 1.3 billion cubic meters of water yearly. Still, only 850 to 900 million cubic meters are available. That's a shortfall of 400 million cubic meters, and it's getting worse. The reasons for this shortfall are terrifying. Climate change is making it harder for Jordan to get the needed rainfall. The country's population is growing, putting more strain on limited resources. And, to make matters worse, there's an influx of refugees who also need water. This year, the situation has become even drier. The three primary drinking water dams in Jordan are at critically low levels. They're only a third of their usual capacity. At the same time, household water consumption has increased by 10%, making the problem even worse. This year, Jordan is facing a shortfall of 40 million cubic meters of water, a terrifying prospect. Authorities are urging residents to conserve as much water as possible, but with such a massive shortfall, it's hard to imagine how the people of Jordan will cope. But aside from all of this, what is the mysterious discovery in Jordan? The University of Haifa's Department of Archaeology has just discovered Israel's largest artificial underground cave in the Jordan Valley. It's believed to have been a Roman and Byzantine-era quarry. 
It's estimated to be the site of Gao Gala from the historical Madaba map. The cave spans about one acre and is 100 meters long and 40 meters wide. Engravings such as cross markings, a zodiac symbol, and Roman letters were found on the pillars in the cave, suggesting that it may have been an early monastery. When Professor Adam Zertel and his team from the University of Haifa's Department of Archaeology stumbled upon an enormous cave in the Jordan Valley, they had no idea what to expect. As they approached the cave's opening, two Bedouins warned them not to go in, as they believed it was inhabited by wolves and hyenas. But the team ventured in, and what they discovered was both mysterious and awe-inspiring. The cave was an underground masterpiece, with 22 enormous pillars supporting the architectonic structure. The pillars had 31 cross markings, Roman letters, an etching of what appeared to be the Roman legion's pennant, and an engraving resembling the zodiac symbol. The team also noticed recesses in the pillars that could have been used for oil lamps and holes where animals were likely tied while hauling quarried stones out of the cave. Despite the cave's beauty and intrigue, its history remains mysterious. The cave was used as a quarry for 400 to 500 years, confirmed by ceramics found and engravings on the pillars. But the cave has also been used for other purposes, including possibly as a hiding place. Upon discovering the cave, the main question was why a quarry was dug underground. Professor Zertel speculates that the cave may have been the site of the biblical Gilgal. The Madaba map shows Galgala next to a Greek inscription that reads Dodekaliton, meaning 12 stones. The cave's distance from Jericho matches the distance from Galgala. The site is marked with a church on the map, and two ancient churches are located near the newly discovered cave. It was common during the Roman era to construct temples of stone that were brought from holy places and were therefore more valuable. If the assumption is correct, the Byzantine identification of the area as the biblical Gilgal afforded the site its necessary reverence. That's why an underground quarry may have been dug there. However, much more research is needed to confirm this theory. Is there more to uncover in the Jordan Valley? Can the river regain its former splendor and fulfill the ancient prophecies of Ezekiel? We certainly hope so. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching until the end. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more content.